M and H. Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex, and this this is, is from David Moskowitz. And hang on a second. I thought that was be quicker. Okay. Magnificent bastard. You said and David Moskowitz. You said and. but all I can think of is five one. <laughs> <laughs> but that's Moskowitz. This is Moskowitz. David Moskowitz, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> and now I'm gonna have American Tales stuck in my head for the rest of the day. It's really ridiculous. Uh, and this is a um, M and H. We've done these guys before. It was the first Israeli distillery. Okay, M and H Tel Aviv. Classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Um, this is their classic malt, classic single malt. Yes. Just period. Yeah. Right? You like their bumblebee bowl? It's fine. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Just keep going. Yeah. Uh, X bourbon. So their classic one is a mix of red wine, STR cast. Just, just real quick though. Yeah, it's just not fine. See, I was waiting for this. Yes. Carry on. Uh, you're, um, uh, <laughs> uh, the bottle design. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about it? Yeah, what do you think uh, of the bottle design? That's fine. The glass. Yeah. I, I don't mean, think anything. I mean, what if it's like that, though? What if it's like. <laughs> See where you're trying to go with this. <laughs> that is a reach. That's a reach. Are you reaching for it? No. That's a reach. I don't know. I'm just, 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 oh, Lord. Sorry. Whoa. Okay. But, oh, there's that funk. Funk! That is. I need a little more in that glass. That just is to, very vegetal. Yeah, that is Vegetation some. Vegetation and mossy and. Yeah, there's some hefty fermentations going on right there. Yeah, this smells wow. green. This smells like you could grow herbs in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, this is like one of the most um, vegetation forward whiskeys I've had in a long time. Yeah, me too. So there's this note that shows up for us on the lower end of the cuts of like the mid 120s, roughly. Mm -hmm. And we cut right before that because as soon as it starts to creep into the nose, if it gets into the palate, it's over. Um, it doesn't get earthy. It stays mm -hmm. in the vegetation area. It yeah. stays in fresh cut grass mixed with a slightly barley forward funk it's, and honey. It's it's a <laughs> that sounds like a really great band. <laughs> funk and honey. Funk and honey. Yeah. Uh, it's the asparagus. It's yeah, the mossiness. It's green. It's plants. Wow. And then behind that, way back there, is that sweet honey granola barley note. Sweeter on the taste. Yeah, but it's still there. There's it still this, um, it, it reaches the point where it's, it's um, it makes your tongue curl a little. It, like splits, this. Mm. it splits the difference. Like on the nose, it's just all the, veg the vegetation mm -hmm. notes. On the taste, it splits the difference between the vegetation, note, vegetation notes and then just the sweet maltiness. Yeah, but it's, there is this sort of like, it's not sour, but this J hook of, Really grain mustiness. I gotta say, I like the taste more than the nose. Yeah, but I don't really like either. So I like it more than the nose because it's balanced against that sweetness. Yeah. And it's keeping it from being just, you know, one dimensional malt sweetness. You That's have like this vegetation character up against the sweetness. It's balancing, which is nicer for me on the taste than the nose, which is just overwhelmed with vegetation. Here's another thing on the palate, and that take monkey shoulder. Add more green vegetation, chop off the finish. Okay. Right? So on the sip. You start with a monkey shoulder style honeyed space side, add green vegetation, cut off the finish so there's no finish. It's a bee bowl. What? A bee bowl. Hey, what's yeah. the story behind the bee bowl? I have no idea. But you can't just put a bee bowl on the bottle and not really talk about the story behind the bee bowl. I'm looking for the bee bowl. It's 46% by the way. Yeah. But you see what I mean? There's yeah. no real finish to this. It just drops off a cliff. Yeah, it doesn't hang on and, and leave you with anything. 
But again, to my point, I'm not blown away by the whiskey. Mm -mm. But I do like the taste better than the nose. And the nose, I was kind of flinching a little bit, getting ready to. Yeah, I'm not. I don't. I'm, I couldn't. And then once you, you know what? Once you get it in you, then going back to the nose, it's not overwhelmingly vegetation. It's you more musty and yeah, honey. You acclimate to the vegetation very quickly. Yeah, I. And now I'm just I can't do it. like that sweet maltiness. Yeah, it, it feels a little young and a little. Um, like I, maybe it had a nice mustiness that could have aged out, but it didn't get the chance to. So the the forty six percent, the alcohol buzziness on the tongue, mm. that's buzzing me pretty hard. <gasps> maybe that's the people. I don't know. I don't know, but it's, it it leaves my tongue kind of um, yeah. You know that feeling after you get drink something with a lot of bubbles. Yeah. Yeah, kind of a springy feeling. Yeah. Yeah, the alcohol, that's leaving me a little bit uh, effervescent. Hmm. All right, then. Yeah. Just feels kind of... Um, Don't drink all of that, because you're going to want it for tomorrow's episode. What? You'll see. Okay. Uh, it feels like... Here's the thing. It's simultaneously not super thin... But it feels like it's just not unfolding. Yeah, like, that's know. what I mean. I feel like it get, it's really, it's got depth and character. And then about halfway through it goes, and I'm done. Yeah. It's and just it just like, sort of steps left out the door. It's like, I'm over it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm leaving now. Bye. <laughs> that's what it says halfway through. Hakan Squist. Today, today I learned if you turn a canoe over, you can wear it as a hat because it's capsized. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you did. You made it through that one before you got to the really. <laughs> Ron Pettit. People talk of foods to pair with whiskey. For yes. me, whiskey and food doesn't mix. Mm. I would rather sit after dinner and enjoy a pour of something, but not with my dinner. See, I, I honestly, I'm split mm? because certain whiskeys. So if I'm having a whiskey I really like, right. and it, I'm not thinking about the food at all. I will set the whiskey aside while I eat dinner yeah. and come back to it after dinner. Mm -hmm. But if I'm at a dinner specifically designed where I'm thinking about whiskey and food, yeah. I can get a lot of joy out of that too. Yeah. And we discovered fairly recently, uh, one of the nicest things to pair with whiskey is another whiskey. Yeah. Yes, we did, yeah. actually. Yeah, there's some nice... Because it changes the whiskey completely. Yeah, and a little AB, bouncing. We're talking about blending, like actual individual. Which gives you a whole new meaning to a whiskey dinner. <laughs> there's whiskey breakfast, there's whiskey dinner. Uh, so yeah, I know I'm, I could get that. I could get that if there hasn't been thought put into the food and whiskey pairing, mm -hmm. then save the whiskey. So but that's true of all drinks, right? I am two minutes from having sipped on this. Mm -hmm. And then I go back, the acclimation that I had to the vegetation, that fades off. Now it's back to vegetation for me. Yeah. It comes back, comes back swinging on that nose. I agree. Is not my favorite nose. No. Though. Not my favorite nose. Me though. either. But not my favorite nose, though. Yeah, me either. Not my favorite nose. No, me either. Is it your favorite nose? No. Yeah, see? Me so, either. <laughs> here's the fight stealing and drinking. If you fight, you fight for a friend. Steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us.